Today, you know, we we'll to talk about the position of the spleen. If you look to the shadow of the spleen, that's uh, located in this nine uh, the division. It's located in the left hypochondrium. This is the left hypochondrium. If you divide the abdomen into um, four divisions, you know, this is umbilicus. So it is in the left upper quadrant, right? So again, I will show you one thing that's really uh, interesting here that look this is the diaphragm this is the shadow of the diaphragm right and at the same time this is the shadow of the uh, of the stomach right this is the abdominal esophagus sorry okay and this is the shadow of the stomach This is the lesser curvature. Okay, so if you look to the, the uh, spleen that's drawn in the green, you will see that it's located behind the uh, behind the uh, stomach, the fundus of the stomach, and between the as I said between the stomach and the diaphragm now let me uh show you the measurements like there is an easy way to measure to uh, remember the uh, measurements related to the spleen look for these odd numbers i know there is number 10 so i will let you know about each number so there is an easy way to remember it. okay there is one three five seven nine ten and eleven the first is three numbers, one, three, five. They indicate one, it indicates to the thickness of the spleen, three to the width and five to the length of it. So this is, for example, the spleen here, guys. So the thickness, we cannot see the thickness, right? Uh, but you imagine it's about one inch. You can ask, okay, one inch, that's in the US and Canada. And I think in Europe they use inch. I think in the Middle East we use centimeters, right? So each inch is equal to 2.5 centimeter. So this is the um, uh, one is the one inch is the thickness, and three inch is the width of it of the spleen, and the five is it indicates the length from the upper pole to the lower pole of the spleen. Okay, now this is one, two, uh, one, sorry, one, three, and uh, five inch. Now, what about seven? This is still an odd number, so in sequence. So seven is the case, seven ounces is around 200 grams. This is the uh, weight of it. Now, most importantly, 19 and 11 these numbers indicate for the number of reps that's located or related to the uh, spleen let me uh, just erase these things and so the uh, spleen covered by the reps normally look this is the costal margin and the inferior uh, border of it so normally spleen uh, is not palpable right but in case there is an enlargement in the spleen something called splenomegaly you will feel the anterior border of it you see these uh, uh, irregular knots you can feel them so look to the long axis of the spleen look here is the long axis of it. So mainly the long axis is crossed by or parallel to the red 10. So the 9, 10 and 11 
these numbers indicate to the number of rips related to the spleen. This is the shadow of the uh, diaphragm, right? And look for the spleen. It's located uh, between the uh, stomach. This is the uh, stomach and the diaphragm. And you can uh, say, okay, how can I locate the spleen? This is something called surface anatomy. How can I locate it? Well, easily we know that it's opposite to the uh, ribs number 9, 10, and 11. Now, how, how long is far from the mid-dorsal um, line? How is far away from mid-dorsal line? How can I exactly locate it? Okay, if you go to the back, to the mid of the back, this is the mid-dorsal line. So, and this is the spine of T. Tin. That means this is the spine of uh, the, the thoracic vertebra number 10. So, you just go 4 centimeters from the spine laterally. So, this 4 centimeters, as you can see in here, 4 centimeters from the spine of T10 laterally, you will reach the posterior border of the spleen. Okay, got it. What about the anterior border? The anterior border, indeed, it's easy in which it reaches the mid-axillary line. This line, guys, right? This is the mid-axillary line, sorry, right? So, how can I locate the, uh, let me erase these things, okay. How can I, uh, how can I, um, uh, localize the, uh, spleen? Okay, it's, uh, behind reps number 19 and 11, and, uh, the long axis of the spleen, the, this is the long axis of the spleen, located parallel to the 10, and, what about the uh, anterior and uh, posterior border? Okay, the posterior border is four centimeters away from uh, the spinous process of vertebra, thoracic vertebra number 10, right? This is the posterior border, and the anterior border of it is located or reached the mid axillary line. The spleen, guys, has two ends and three borders and two surfaces. Although I don't like numbers, but it's easier to remember. Let us start with the ends of the spleen. This is, uh, in this figure, you can see the uh, 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 medial view of the uh, spleen. Look up here, the uh, medial uh, end of it. You can say, okay, this is the medial end. Where is the lateral end? Okay, this is the lateral end. This is the lateral end. So, if you look the, in the, uh, toward the medial end, you know, the spleen becomes like narrower, right? It's tapering. But the lateral end is broad. Well, you can say, how is that? How comes? This is the medial and this is the lateral. Okay, let me show you. This is an anterior view. Uh, and, you know, this is the uh, diaphragm. And there is another video about the position of the spleen. So, this is the diaphragm. And we know this is the stomach. We know that the spleen located between the uh, fundus of the stomach and the um, uh, diaphragm and this is the correct position of it so this is you know these reps so this is lateral and this is the toward the midline which is medial so this extremity is the medial and this one is the lateral one back again so this is the medial and this is the uh, lateral uh, end 
Now, what else? You have to know also that uh, we can raise these, okay? So, also the uh, spleen has um, three borders. The superior one, that's in the blue color here. This is the uh, superior border. And this is the, the green one, right? This is the inferior border. And in between, between the superior one and the inferior, there is an intermediate border, this one, which is incomplete, that extended from the medial end from here toward the hilum. This is the hilum of the uh, spleen. Now, back again to the uh, um, superior border. You know, the superior border is sharp, as you see, and it has a kind of notch, which can be felt if the spleen enlarged, a case known as a splenomegaly. So, if the spleen enlarged three times more than the uh, its actual size, so we can feel the uh, this border. Why? Because of the knots exist here. And what about the inferior border? This is the inferior border of it, and you know it's broad and kind of smooth. And the last one, which is the, as we said, uh, the intermediate border that's located between both of them, that extended again from middle end to the hilum. What about the uh, surfaces of the uh, uh, spleen? You know, the spleen has two surfaces, as you see here. This is the smooth, diaphragmatic surface. And this is the uh, irregular uh, concave visceral uh, surface. Let us start with this one, with the diaphragmatic uh, surface. You know, it's a kind of a convex. And if you look here, it's in the back, right? It should be here, right? In the back, we cannot see it. But it's against the diaphragm. Here is the diaphragm. So, so it's against the diaphragm. And you know, um, it uh, when the, you know the, the the diaphragm itself, as you see, separates the spleen from the base of the left lung that's located here, right, and from the uh, lower part of the pleura. You know, the membrane that covers the um, uh, wall of the, the thoracic wall should be here, right? And the ribs number 9, 10, and 11. Now, what about the visceral surface? This is the visceral surface. It's concave, irregular, and directed toward the abdominal cavity. Where is the abdomen? Okay, there is the ab here, is, here is the abdominal cavity. So this is the visceral surface, right? This is the visceral surface directed toward the different organs and structures in the abdominal um, cavity. Uh, and here you can see uh, this is the visceral um, surface of the spleen. Back again, you can see that um, the visceral surface has, um, most importantly, the hilum, which is an entrance for um, vessels course entrance and exit of vessels and at the same time you can see there is a kind of impressions 
on the visceral surface. There's a, an impression for the uh, what we know as gastric impression for the fundus of the stomach, and there is another impression for the left kidney, the anterior surface of the uh, left kidney. It's called renal uh, impression or renal area, and another impression which is known as colic area or colic impression for the left colic flexure. We'll talk about the flexure that means bending, right? Here we go. So this is transverse colon and it bends, sorry, it bends here. So, and this is like impression for the kidney and this is for the stomach. Okay, and if you look here, there is very important impression for the for the tail of the pancreas. You know, the pancreas extended up to the end. This is the tail of it that gets in the hilum. This is the hilum, right? The hilum of the spleen. Let me show you. Here is the uh, visceral uh, surface of the spleen, and you can see, here we go, this is the gastric impression for the uh, stomach, right? And here in the uh, colic area or colic impression, right? This is the transverse colon and this is the descending colon, so there is a flexure here. And there is another impression for the uh, uh, kidney for the left kidney called renal impression or renal area. This is the left kidney, right? This is the left kidney, okay? And this is supra renal gland as well. So, here in the impression for the uh, kidney is called renal area. And most importantly, you can see here the tail of the pancreas. This is the pancreas. This is the head, neck, body, and this is the tail of it. So look, here is the impression for the tail of the pancreas in the hilum. I will start first with the, this is the spleen, and this is a cross section of the uh, spleen. If you look just here you can see that there is a kind of a capsule so there is a thin layer of a capsule so the spleen is covered by a thin um, capsule a layer and outside the capsule not just the capsule but also outside there is a, a, a layer of visceral peritoneum because we know that the, uh, the spleen is entirely covered by uh, visceral peritoneum except at the uh, splenic uh, hilum at this area and we know this area is mainly for um, uh, where is uh, a splenic branch of uh, splenic arteries and vein enter uh, and leave now the visceral peritoneum that um, covers the uh, spleen is attached uh, to the spleen and other structures and uh, most importantly the uh, gastrosplenic ligament and splenorenal ligament look gastro it means the stomach and splenic of course related to the spleen and again a ligament from the spleen to the anterior surface of left kidney renal renal it means something related to the kidney anyway there is a video about the uh, uh, peritoneum or more than there is a series of videos about the peritoneum and these ligaments you can watch them so let let me show you where these ligaments first of all this is the spleen right and you know this is the stomach and here is the upper pole of the left kidney that should be like 
here and this is the suprarenal gland so I'll use this color now so look to the uh, uh, attachment of the fundus of the stomach and part of the uh, greater curvature to the um, uh, hilum of the spleen so this ligament is the gastrosplenic ligament right this is the gastrosplenic ligament on the other hand the lower part here right so this is the uh, uh, splenorenal ligament that attaches the spleen to the kidney this is as I said this is the kidney as we're in the gland so back let me show you back look if you look here there is a kind of two layers upper and lower look to this one which is the gastrosplenic ligament this ligament attaches the or connects the spleen to the fundus of the stomach right now the other layer of ligament let me erase it so it's be like there so the other layer or the lower layer or the layer that's close to the uh, inferior border this is the inferior border anyway so this layer is the splenorenal uh, ligament you know it connects the spleen to the anterior surface of the left kidney so look to the most importantly in this ligament the uh, uh, in the splenorenal ligament there is uh, a space for the tail of the pancreas this is a pancreas and this is the tail of the pancreas now what about the uh, what about the content uh, of uh, these ligaments let me show you so before that I will show you in a cross and this cross section I will show you the ligaments okay this is the spleen and this is the stomach and the ligament in between is the splenogastric um, or gastrosplenic ligament and another ligament between the spleen and the anterior surface of the kidney is the splenorenal ligament this is the splenorenal ligament where is the uh, tail of pancreas located in and the uh, splenic vessels artery and vein uh, enter and leave so two ligaments spleno uh, or gastro splenic ligament and spleno renal ligament now again the content for the first one in the gastro splenic ligament and this one right this is a gastro splenic so you will see the short gastric vessels indeed they these vessels uh, supply the uh, fundus of the stomach and the lift gastro epipluic vessel or gastro mental vessel these you know vessels responsible for supplying the greater curvature of the stomach if you imagine this is the stomach and bring it right down this is the greater curvature and you know almost like that so these short vessels supply the fundus and the um, Lift gastrobiblic vessels supply the upper part or the lift part of the greater curvature. This is the greater curvature of the stomach. This is lift gastrobiblic. There is another vessel which is the uh, right gastrobiblic. They, you know, anastomose with each other. So, let me raise these things. 
So what about the, again, what about the content of the um, gastro uh, splenic ligament? Is the short gastric vessels and the left gastroepiploic vessel. Now, what about the other ligament? The splenorenal ligament that connects the spleen to the front of the kidney. You know, as you saw uh, from uh, previous figures, that it contains the tail of the pancreas, as you see here, and splenic arteries and uh, vein. So, this is an uh, intraabdominal image, just to remind you. This is the spleen, as you see here, right? And this is a greater omentum. And here in the liver, and this is the stomach. Look. And what else? This is the diaphragm. You know, we know that the spleen is located between the stomach, sorry, between the stomach and the diaphragm, right? And here we go. You remember the colic uh, area or colic impression, which is uh, for the um, uh, lift colic flexure here. So this is the colon. Okay. Uh, briefly, you know, let us get it from the end. The spleen is supplied mainly from splenic artery, which is a branch of celiac trunk. This is the uh, celiac uh, trunk. So, one of the main branch of the celiac trunk is the splenic artery. This is the splenic artery. You know, as you see, this is the pancreas, and you can see that the splenic artery that supplies the spleen, except from its name, splenic, the supply for the spleen, it passes um, along the uh, body and uh, tail of the pancreas at the upper border of it. So if you look, this is the uh, upper border of the pancreas, and this is a tertuous uh, artery is known as splenic artery. Look, it's tertuous and it um, uh, goes all the way toward the spleen until it reaches the hilum of the spleen. Then it divides into five or six branches, as you see. All these branches in the hilum. And um, what else? Most importantly, the splenic artery and also the splenic vein and the tail of pancreas, all of them uh, 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 get the access to the hilum of spleen through the splenorenal ligament, the ligament between the hilum of the spleen and the anterior um, uh, surface of the left kidney. There is another. There is a, another video uh, about splenorenal uh, ligament. You can watch. But let me show you. Uh, this is the visceral surface of the spleen, and there is uh, two. We can see uh, two ligaments. This one is the uh, gastro splenic ligament. That means between the. Uh, uh, stomach and the spleen, but we I'm talking about this one, which is the um, splenorenal ligament. No, let me uh, raise this and use this pen. So, okay, this ligament is the splenorenal ligament. Look. There is, um, in, indeed, it's a path uh, for, or a route for the splenic arteries and vein, you know, for the entrance of these vessels and exit, of course, for artery and vein, and there's a place for 
uh, all of a sudden for the tail of the pancreas. Look, you know, this is the tail of the pancreas, and this is the body, and so forth. So, this is the pancreas, and this is the tail of the pancreas. So, splenic vessels and tail of pancreas uh, 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 contained within the splenorenal ligament. What about the uh, uh, venous drainage? You know, we mentioned the arterial supply. The venous drainage is also is easy to remember, which is, uh, you know, through the, mainly through the uh, uh, splenic vein. So the drainage from the spleen, um, uh, uh, or the blood from the spleen drained by the splenic vein that passes from the hilum, right, behind the uh, uh, tail and body of the uh, pancreas all the way until the until it reaches the uh, neck of the pancreas this area i want to use another pen right I'm use the red now, this area is the location of the neck of the pancreas because you see this is the head of the pancreas and here in the neck so this is the neck of the pancreas and this is the body all the way and this is the tail of the pancreas so I'll raise it and make it like uh, okay so blood flow blood from the spleen drains through the splenic vein that passes behind the tail and body of the pancreas and it receives in um, uh, in its way uh, a vein that's called inferior mesenteric vein then they unite again or indeed the splenic vein receives the inferior uh, mesenteric vein and it continues to unite with this important vein it's called superior mesenteric vein so this is a superior mesenteric uh, vein and they unite I mean splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein they unite behind the neck of the pancreas which is important and they form the most important uh, or very important vein which is called hepatic portal vein that um, uh, uh, drains the uh, blood from GI and different organs in our body toward the uh, liver and this is the uh, liver this is called hepatic portal uh, vein now you can see here also this is the uh, I'll use another vein okay here is the uh, spleen and this is splenic vein and a splenic artery both in the uh, uh, splenorenal uh, ligament Okay, and uh, guys, now let me uh, just uh, show you uh, a kind of a clinical uh, correlations related to the um, uh, spleen and uh, as we talk about the anatomy of the um, uh, spleen. First of all, you know, I mentioned that anyway in another video, but um, there is a kind of enlargement, you heard about the uh, enlargement of the spleen, something called splenomegaly. So the enlargement of the spleen can be filled, or the spleen can be uh, filled uh, uh, in the subcostal uh, region if the uh, mainly the spleen becomes like three times uh, larger than its actual size and you know there is a notch on the uh, anterior uh, border of the spleen and indeed uh, these notch um, are very helpful to feel the, the uh, enlarged uh, spleen and to differentiate it from other uh, uh, structures and if you uh, I want to raise this stuff and if you look here guys you can see that okay this is a transverse colon and then descending colon and you see there is a ligament here which is you know it connects the um, uh, calyx or the transverse colon or indeed exactly the left colloquial flexure and to the uh, uh, diaphragm and this ligament is called phrenico 
colic ligaments. What does it mean? Phrenico is something related to the diaphragm. That's called phrenico. Colic to the uh, intestine, of, and here we talk about the uh, large intestine. And so these ligaments, in case of splenomegaly, enlargement of the spleen, the spleen will move downward and a little bit medially. Why? Because of the of this ligament that kind you know kind of prevents the spleen from moving uh, just downward. In this diagram, you see that the spleen moved like this enlarged spleen moved like medially and inferiorly, that partially transverse colon and even the descending. Um, uh, colon subcostally. Uh, this is about the uh, spleno uh, megaly. And also, there is another uh, um, clinical point which is important from anatomical view. You see, this is the uh, pancreas, and uh, this is the head, and neck, and body, and most importantly, the tail. This is the tail of the pancreas, and as we mentioned, that the tail. Uh, inserted uh, in the uh, uh, splenorenal ligament with the splenic vessels. In case you know there is no way just to, or, or the only way, if there is, if it's the only way to um, uh, the splenic, um, the splenectomy is the only way to treat the enlargement of the spleen. I mean, if the the only way to treat the uh, uh, spleen by removing it and a surgery that's known as splenectomy, removing the uh, surgical removal of the uh, spleen. So you have to make sure that the tail of the pancreas will not be injured. And this is uh, uh, common because of its closed relation to the uh, spleen. And another point, you know, because the uh, uh, spleen is closed or against the uh, ribs number 9, 10, and 11, so it's, you know, um, more uh, susceptible for uh, or more viable for injury, especially in case of uh, automobile accident and. Uh, 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 in case if there is a fracture or fractures in one or all maybe of uh, these uh, ribs so you know the the ribs when uh, they fract when there is a fracture in the ribs the uh, fragments of the bone become uh, like a knife right so that's it becomes like easier to penetrate the abdominal wall and injure the organs uh, such as for example the uh, spleen thank you so much and uh, hope you find uh, value in it thank you